if you've used DWM in the past, then you will most likely have used the master layout. Now, if I show you here, the master layout is supposed to look a little something like this. So basically what you have is you have one main master window over here, and then any new windows that you open are going to be slave windows, which are going to be on the right side here. So right now there is one master window along with two slave windows on the right. Let's say I wanted to have two masters, which I can do so by typing in or just pressing the buttons, super M, I can create new masters, two new masters over here, and then open as many slave windows as I want. This is the power of using DWM's layout, which is master layout. Now, let me actually show you how you can configure this. So I have a config file over here, layout.conf, right? In here, I have master layout and I have only one option enabled so far. Okay, just make sure that you've already set your layout to master. By default, your layout is going to be dwindle, which is going to be BSPWM's layout. So if you open a bunch of windows, this is what dwindle looks like. Okay. So it's basically your windows are going to look like the leaves of a binary tree. So if you open windows continuously like this, this is what you're going to see. The same behavior as in BSPWM. Now, if you want DWM, you're going to have to change dwindle to master. And once you do that, you'll have a whole slew of configuration options that you can look through over here. Okay. Now I have chosen the ones that are most effective and the ones that you're most likely going to use. And I've put them over here, which is what I will be showing you. If however, you're you're a bit doubtful as to how this thing actually works. You can read the description or you can just look it up online. Okay. Now, as for adding extra master windows, this is not actually something you can do by default because allow small split is going to be disabled by default. So false is what it's going to be. You're not going to see it inside of the config file. Okay. And this configuration file, by the way, this is actually going to be inside of your hyperland config file. So I've just put it inside of a modules folder, which you can do if you want to, it's basically splitting one file into multiple files, something I call modularity, which if I just show you, it's right over here. So in this section in anti-fragile modularity, basically I show you why make things modular, the apps that we can make modular and how actually to go about doing that. Along with that, I also show you how you can make a custom theme switcher like this one. So basically you choose your favorite theme amongst a list of pre-made themes that you have. And what happens is your entire system adapts to that theme. So if, for example, let's say I show you an app like Niche, so this is a fetch tool, okay, then I open VS Codium, this is going to be your text editor, and then let's say I open a file manager, something like Thunar, okay? This is your, going to be your typical software dev setup, right? You have a terminal, usually this is what it's going to look like. You have your terminal over here, and then you have your code editor, and then your file manager. Now watch what happens as I switch the theme. Best part is... With this theme switcher, the theme automatically updates for basically every single app that I configure. It even works for Discord. So if I just show you Discord, okay, if I open Discord as well, this is what you see. Now, using this master layout, okay, we can actually add another master. So let's say we wanted to open VS Codium again. So we wanted to put Discord on top, VS Codium bottom. So we can do that with super M that sends the bottom window over here that sends the window to the bottom. And then we can open whatever other terminal windows we want and then have a bunch of slaves over here. <laughs> very nice and very fun. Let me show you another theme, something like Rose Pine. So I can switch the theme and this is what you see. Best part, it also works for this as well, for GTK4 apps. So if I show you something like Nautilus, this is what Nautilus looks like, Ta-da! as you can see. Now, the thing with GTK4 apps is you're actually going to have to close and reopen the app in order for it to load. That's why GTK4, I mean 3, is actually much easier to theme than 4. Slight little quirks here and there that I teach you how to fix and exactly how to do this inside of the program, which is the first link in the description. So here, if I actually show you this properly to make sure you get a good idea, inside of theme switchers, which is actually a two hour long module, it took me way longer than just two hours to create this module, but you get the drill, right? Making theme switchers is not exactly the most quick of tasks. So here in the first couple of sections over here, for the first couple of seconds, I tell you exactly what a theme switcher actually is. Then if I show you here, this is all the code that explains how it works. If we go to the end, there's going to be, you guessed it, a bunch more code. Now I actually explain how you can do this and don't just give you the dot files and then say here, figure it out and make it work. So that's another plus. So if you don't want to basically monkey see, monkey do, copy somebody else's setup and then oops, just cry over your setup when it breaks and you actually want to know how to fix it, that's all something that I teach you how to do in Hyper Accelerator, which is a program that's the first link in the description. So 
If you want to know how to do that, you can go ahead and check it out. Now, let's get back over here, okay? Let's go here. Now, then for special scale factor. Now, what is this? This is basically scale of windows in special workspace. So in Hyperland, you have access to special workspaces, right? If you press your mod key, which is most likely going to be super, and then you press S, what happens is you get opened a scratchpad workspace or a special workspace. If you've used Sway before, then you're familiar with the idea of scratchpads, okay? It's basically like a workspace, which is a throwaway workspace. So it's not like your default workspaces from zero or from one to 10. It's instead a workspace that doesn't show up anywhere on Waybar or anywhere else basically, but still exists. Now you can use it to run updates in the background or as I'm doing over here, run OBS, right? Now for whatever windows that are going to be opened inside of this workspace, you can choose the scale. Let's say I wanted to reduce the size of these windows for whatever reason. If I make it 0.8, which is 80% the original size of the window, as you can see, this is what 80% of original window size looks like. It's basically scaling down the window in order to fit this particular number. I can open a bunch of other windows over here. And as you can see, this is the kind of layout that you can expect. Now, it's not the same as just increasing the gaps out, okay? You have an option called gaps out in Hyperland where you can increase the gaps around the windows, but that does not give you this same look because as you can see here, the top edge of this app of OBS is not exactly in line with the top edge of this terminal. Same goes for the bottom edge. So this is a separate feature that you can control only through special scale factor. Now, that's the same option that you get inside of Dwindle as well. Let's say you were using the Dwindle layout, but then wanted to reduce the app size, okay, app scale to be 95% its original size, okay, not quite 100%, but 95%. This is what that would look like. You can launch any other apps that you want, just as usual. And this is what you're going to see. Very cool. Now, let's actually go back. Okay, great. Next, we have the master to slave ratio. This is called M fact, okay? It's a floating point number between zero to one, but basically the number that you put over here decides the ratio between, or the split basically, between the main window, which is going to be your master window and your slaves. So right now, if it's set to 0.5, it's not going to look all that different. So it's actually supposed to be 0.5. Let's write the changes. Okay, let's go to a different workspace. Yeah, as you can see, it works on a different workspace, right? We just have to close and reopen the app, but the windows are just going to be split exactly down the middle. And then if I open a bunch of new windows, as you can see, they're all slaves on the right side. So I can close all the slaves, kill the slaves. Okay, <laughs> kill the slaves. Let's increase master to slave ratio. Just really compress the slaves down so they have no room to breathe. Okay. <laughs> uh, sometimes I really wonder whether I'm a good person. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay. Well, we can try and kill the slaves even more, suffocate them to death. Uh, let's close all the windows. Yeah, there's barely any room for the slaves to breathe at this point. Don't know why you would do that. You can't even see what the slave is trying to show you. <laughs> but anyway, let's say you wanted the slaves to win over the master. You can change M fact from 0.7 or whatever to 0.3. And then ta-da, the slaves are now overthrowing the masters. There you go. The slave windows have more space. They're, <laughs> they're genuinely creating an uprising against the master. So that's fun. That, and that is how you can use M fact to control the master slave ratio. Just make sure that your slaves don't overcome you as the master window, okay? <laughs> then, for new status, what should a new window be? Should a new window be a slave, okay? Or should it be a master, or should it inherit? Now, by default, DWM behavior is going to be slave. So any new window is just going to be born into slavery, <laughs> which just makes the window pop up over here on the right side, okay? Any new window born into slavery. If you don't want... Okay, if you don't want your windows to be born into slavery, instead you want them to be masters, you want them to be aristocrats, you can just change new status to master and then you should be good. Now what happens is every single new window that's going to pop up is going to be a master. So let's say window one was the master. A new window is born, okay? It kicks the old master out, makes it into a slave. This is window two. Then again, here we have window three. So any new window that pulls up is basically going to be an aristocratic master of windows. <laughs> yes, isn't that lovely? And then thirdly, we have another option called inherit. So what inherit does is it depends on where your cursor is or which window is actually focused rather. Let's say 
I have the master window focused. So now if I hit enter a bunch of times, the new window every single time is going to be born a master. Let's say, however, that I wanted more slaves and I've had enough of masters. I just have to focus the slave window. And now if I open a bunch of terminals, it's going to give me a bunch of slaves. That is what you can do with new master or new status. It dictates whether a new window is going to be a master, a slave or inherit, which basically means give the new window the status of whatever the previously focused window was. Okay, now what else do we have? We have new on top, which means new windows on top of slaves. In order to see this, you're going to have to turn it on and then play around with it in order to figure it out, but it's pretty simple. Any new window that opens, any new slave window is going to just pop up and come here from the top instead of the bottom. That's it. That's pretty simple. Not much explanation required there. Okay, then new on active. Now this one, this is a fun one, <laughs> okay? This is a really fun one. Let's say we have three windows focused, okay? Now, if I focus, let's just call these window one, window two and window three so you can understand it better okay window three now if i have window three focused and then i try and press enter to open a terminal as you can see it doesn't open a window below here instead it makes room so it cuts it basically just juts a new window right in between these two that's what before does and this let's call this window four now watch if i open a new window a new window is going to be opened above window four it should technically be below and above, but before and after it is what it is, right? As you can see, a new window pops up before, above, window four. Let's say I did not want that. I wanted this instead. Let's say I wanted it to, to be after. So if I select after over here and after window two, if I press enter, a new window is going to pop up below window two. Of course, this remains unchanged. If I open a new window below window three, this is just going to look like default behavior. But when actually the behavior changes is when you open a window right below window two. And there's another option called none, but you're most likely not going to see the difference. So you can just let it be. The most common options you're going to be using with new on active is either going to be below or not below, but actually before and after and or after. Then smart resizing. This one's the same as in dwindle. I've covered it in a previous video. So if you want to know that, you can check it out. Smart resizing, what this does is gives you a more natural resizing feel. It's a bit hard to tell, okay? I've tried using this and then I wasn't really able to tell that much of a difference, but then if you have a really big monitor and then you have lots of windows that you're resizing, this one might be pretty useful for you. So try it out, see if it really works for you and you see a difference or not. And then here, drop it cursor, pretty simple. It's just windows drop where you tell them to. Instead of windows automatically being dropped inside of the slave space, inside of this slave, house <laughs> slave area over here the windows actually go where you tell them to sometimes you're not able to notice a difference but most of the time it should work if it doesn't you can just leave the setting because you're not going to be using it most often anyway then after that this one always keep position last one over here don't let master window occupy the entire screen even if there are no slaves let's say you killed all the slaves okay there's only one master remaining New and no new slaves have been created. And so this master rules over your, your current workspace. Okay. Now, if I say always keep position on, what's going to happen is the master is going to be cut in half. Okay. <laughs> the master is just going to be reduced to a fraction of its former size and glory. And now all that is to basically just make room for the slaves. If I open more slave windows, they perfectly fit into the space that's been created by the master. No idea why you would not have one window occupy the entirety of a workspace, but just in case you're that one psychopath who always likes their windows cut in half, this option is for you, right? Let's just turn that off because why would we want to have that, right? You just turn it off, always keep position is off. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. And that is all the config options inside of the master layout discussed. There you go. If you want to know how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, along with a waybar theme switcher, this one I actually forgot to show you how it works, but this is a waybar theme switcher. As you see here, best part, it adapts to whatever other theme that I choose as well. So let's say this green color, green color stays green, does not change. I can pick noir as a theme. This one's actually a theme that I created specifically to minimize distractions. So it has lots of, let me just show you on Discord. So yeah, this basically has lots of pastel colors and muted colors so that the system doesn't actually get in your way. 
this is what it looks like. It looks pretty damn good. So if you want to know how to make this, I teach you exactly how to do this inside of the theme switcher module. I do that. And then of course, all the other stuff that you see here, installing Hyperland from scratch, in case you didn't install it right. And then all the other fun stuff that you see over here. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Stay rising.